you want to be able to take images that look like this with the problem face kind of zoomed out and make them and turn them into this where you can actually get a nice upscaled face as well as a nice image well i got the fix for you what's up world should be back with another video and today we're checking out all things stable diffusion specifically the new extension zoom enhance and the reason why i'm making this video is because a lot of people are having issues installing this as well as not getting it to work. And this is kind of like a new awesome feature and I've really been liking it. And it's been part of the reason why I've been having such problems getting my prompts to come out correctly. And I've spent hours trying to get faces and hands to come out good, especially when they're far away and not the focal point of the image. And I can't seem to get it to work. So this actually takes your image, zooms it in, fixes the problem area, it detects if there's faces or hands in the image, you can also do different things, but there's a ton of stuff there that not even I fully understand, but we'll try to explain the best I can to you. And so you can even prompt that selected image and how it selects things, you can even use control net with it, there's a lot of things there. Alright, so let's get into how to actually install this thing and get it running, because so many people have been having issues with it and being able to get this extension to work. Okay, so first up, you're going to head over to your, your web UI and get it all loaded up and ready to go, and we're going to head over to the extensions folder. Now I'm going to have two things down below, or at least one. The one link being the GitHub link where you can install directly from the URL. You can also come to this available tab here and you'll hit load from and you'll uncheck the abs tab or ads and you'll hit control F or you can scroll down and look for it, but I did control F. You can type in unprompted, which will be there, but I forgot that I installed it. So you'll type in the unprompted and that will then be there. So the button here, I'll just give a little explanation. When you click install, it'll go to installing right here in this little section. And then when it's done installing, it will go back to install. And that was the method that I did because I did it from install from URL. I didn't know how long to wait. And I clo I think I restarted my UI too fast and I crafted a bunch of stuff. So I had to delete the extension. If anything happens, if your UI doesn't want to load or even on your prompt, if you get stuck at the top here where it says installing web UI, then just go into your extension folder and delete that extension as well. And then you'll be able to reinstall the extension and try again. But it should be then in your install tab, and here it is for mine, and it should be all checked. You're going to go ahead and apply and restart UI. However, that isn't the only way to get it loaded. It's probably not going to work for you, and it's probably only going to generate a 5x12, 5x12 image, and it's not going to combine the two, which has been the main part of the issue once this gets all up and loaded. Now, when that does happen, because it inevitably will, I'm going to have this link down below, and this is from the creator of the extension himself. He posted this link, and I'm going to have the link to the download directly, or I'm going to have a link in here as well, so you can come right to the GitHub, so you can download this one if you don't trust me, or at least want the source. And then once you download this file, we're going to go ahead and use it to replace a file under the folder that the extension that, that you just downloaded. And that should be located somewhere under your web UI folder. Mine was under my web UI extensions, unprompted, short codes, stable diffusion. Again, the, the previous folders might be different for you, but once you get into your web UI directory, this is where it'll be. And then you'll go ahead and replace this zoom enhance file. And it should be in a zip folder like this. You'll go ahead and drag it over and replace it. Since I've already done it, I'm not going to do it for the purposes of the video, but you'll need to. Once that is done, then you can come right back to your web UI. You can go right back to your extensions folder, apply and restart UI, or you can go and restart your whole command prompt section here. You can restart the entire thing. Okay, so briefly, I'm going to show some two test images here. And you saw the one I used in the thumbnail is the one that I did with all the fixes and stuff like that. But I'm also going to try with the LoRa extension and see if I can get that to work. Although I think it only works with Stable Diffusion models 2.1 and above. If I use a model that's not from 2.1, if I use it from 1.5, then it doesn't work. At least it's what I believe, or it might be vice versa. But we're going to go ahead and try it out. Okay, so we're going to work with this exact same triple image that I've had. And clearly, this is not upscaled yet. And that's because my GPU can't handle the upscaled version. I'm sure many can't. Anyways, they're at like 4K if you do four times. Anyways, as you can see, the face is just not, it's not looking too well. But everything else in the image looks fairly, done, fairly well done, and even the car looks nice. So I really want to use this image, so we're going to go ahead and use it again. And I'm going to kind of show you how we can use the prompt. And there also is another workaround solution because it doesn't seem like it's working correctly. And I'm going to show you where the folder is for where the files might go to. Otherwise, you can save directly from the web UI. There's a few things there. Maybe this will be fixed by the time this video gets released. But and I hope so at least. But if not, I'll have it all there for you. Okay, so coming back to the web UI, we see it in here. I'm going to drag it into the PNG info and just get all of the details here directly from it just so that I have all my details the exact same of everything that I used. So that way I can use the exact same problem image and we can work from there. And you can see that this just just works <laughs> and doesn't really need any other 
processes or even and do any in painting or anything like that it just works all together and again if the extension is installed you should see this thing here unprompted it should be enabled again this is the little add section unfortunately but you can just go ahead and minimize that so you don't even need to see it and there's some other things here so it's not a huge ordeal just want to preface that so you guys know that okay so once we come back to our prompt we're just going to go ahead and paste in this little prompt here and i'll explain further and what you can kind of do with this later but for now we're just going to paste this in here so we can get our image back and this is the zoom enhance however i want to preface this this one does not currently work you have to use the workaround method at least in my case it didn't seem to work so i'm going to show you the workaround one here to put in for now but this should be the default one maybe once they fix it Okay, so here's the workaround one. This is zoom after zoom enhance. Use workaround just right there. It was like pretty simple. Just put that in the middle there and then after. So now we can go ahead and generate our image. Now once it's done, you'll see two notable images here that'll pop up for you. Now this won't be in your output folder. I don't believe it goes into a temp folder and I'll have a thing down below that you can access your temp folders or you can just do percent temp and uh, percent and then that will allow you to access your temp folder and it should be in there again i'm going to have all the like the file directories down below or you can just save it within here i usually at this point will more than likely send this to extras and just have it upscaled so i don't even really need the downscaled version and i can always access it in my temp files however we'll go ahead and check out the images here and as you can see this was our previous image and now here is our brand new image look at that so much better it doesn't look exactly like the way i want it and you as you can see it's not the same as the thumbnail and why is that well, because you can do even more with this, if you add a subsection here in between these little workaround section, you can actually add even more details in with that. And here are the two different prompts that you'll use when replacing something that you want to be a little bit different than what the replacement was. So, for example, if you want to replace the face and have it closer to something like a Walter White face, which I'll show up here. It's, OP's got the post, or the guy that made that extension has the posting of the images and kind of like what they look for differences. So he replaced Walter White's face, and he got a much higher quality image for that. And so what you'll do here is you'll do your replacement equals, and in, in these parentheses, you'll put what you want there. Now... If you want to do the the fingers instead of the face, you'll do mask equal fingers and then replacement close up hand. You'll add that here. He added a little bit of denoising thing. Again, there's really complex stuff that I don't fully understand after this point with all the control net and things like that. Yeah, I just haven't delved into it enough to kind of present it to you. So if you want to check out everything, I'll have all the links down below where you can check out all the instructions to it. And it's also within the extension itself. In fact, the extension has all the stuff in here. It has all the manuals and all these different things, secondary shorthand. Uh, short short code tags all this stuff here there's a bunch of things that you can look in so that's really nice to have okay so this is kind of what it looks like with the workaround in present just kind of space in between the two and for me i did i believe to get that image i had in the thumbnail i did cyberpunk girl and i think i did pretty face it was just like that just to get it more upscaled and not look a little weird and i tried to even in paint it and i'll maybe even have the in painted image up it did not look good at all in painting is really difficult to work with but i'm going to try to use a laura extension here and i'm going to see if i can get it to work within this now i might need to take it out of the parentheses or leave it in but i'm going to leave it in for now and see if we can kind of get it to work and i'll let you know and see if that works otherwise this is exactly what i did to get that thumbnail image just implement whatever you want in here for the plot for the prompt to replace that 5 by 12 image that comes up where it detects your face and kind of fixes it that's where your all your prompting will be done within there now it does look like the Laura extension had some sort of effect on it because it came out a little bit different and I'm almost positive this is the prompt I used the other day. Unfortunately when I do PNG info for the other image, I cannot pull the exact parameters of what I used in there, but I think this is what I used and it came out a bit different. So I think the Laura extension did work, although I'm not as pleased with the results comparatively, so I probably wouldn't use it anymore, especially when this one did a lot better with the depth and all of that. So that that should be about it for everything and as far as if there's any issues with getting the extension installed or any errors it might not work with some of your extensions and that could be the issue but i hope i did cover everything in this video and if you enjoyed i'd like a like and subscribe and until the next one deuces